What's the state of LSU football? And whether you live in Casper, Wyoming, or Bossier City, Louisiana, will probably determine how you answer that. I think the closer you get to the LSU program, the more you probably understand what I'm about to say is true. But nationally, I think the whole quote-unquote narrative out there nationally about LSU is totally out of whack on two fronts. I've felt for a long time, in fact, part of the motivation for me starting my own show way back in the day, is I thought the national college football media apparatus totally lacked connectivity with fan bases on the ground. It's very hard to reside in a studio 1,500 miles away and you never get in the weeds and you never get in the culture and you're never on the board, you're never on the talk radio shows, you're never in the stadium. How are you going to not live that life but also understand what college football fans are thinking? Well, the easy answer is you're not. And so there was this void. And so we've tried to do our part to fill it. Uh, but I think right now it's a perfect case study because there's a lot of national conversation going on in the whole media sphere about LSU. Things aren't great at LSU right now. The on-field product's bad. They've already lost a couple of games. They're a dog of three and a half points at Kentucky Saturday. And so, yeah, there's a lot of piling on. Some people accuse me of doing that the other night. That's the last thing I did, which I'll address momentarily. But I think people are really missing the boat here about the state of LSU football. Because I don't think it's terrible at all. I just think they're in a bad spot right now. But there are a lot of folks who think LSU football is spiraling into the abyss. I am on the total opposite side of that fence. I think the program's ready to explode, just not this year. But there are so many pieces in place for this program to take off like a rocket ship. I don't think people quite realize how ready, set, made that situation is. It's just probably going to be for a new administration. So um, the other night, I mentioned the first kind of out of whack perception I think exists nationally about LSU. And that is that a lot of folks look and they say LSU fans are out of whack with their expectation level and their perspective because you're less than two full years removed from a national championship and already you want to fire a head coach and already you want to hit the dump button. Well, first off, they don't want to hit the dump button entirely. They do, I think to a large degree, want to hit the dump button on the head coach there. But even having said that, the same devil's advocate voice would come back and say, but okay, that's the guy who led you to a national championship. I've had people reach out to me, not a ton of them, but enough for me to acknowledge. I've had people reach out to me over the past, let's say, 48, 72 hours. And they've said something along these lines. Wow, bro, so you were all on board with LSU back in 2019. And now all of a sudden, when it's convenient, you want to turn on them. You want to turn on us. No, that's about the last thing in the world I want to do. If you've ever listened to this show, and if you haven't, I don't really care about the opinion, but if you've ever listened to this show, you understand I fully root for guys like Ed Orgeron or Sam Pittman or Shane Beamer. We call them culture fits. It's integral to the fabric of college football. My best case scenario is a guy like Ed Orgeron succeeding for the rest of his life and residing in Baton Rouge, Louisiana for the rest of his life. That ain't happening. That's not happening. And also, it's not just Saturday problems. I got a good coaching buddy of mine who labels these sorts of things Wednesday problems. If it's a Saturday problem, it means it's a pure football problem and it can be fixed with good coaching and better recruiting and development, yada, yada, yada. That is not the case here. If you're living nationally and you're looking at this program from 50,000 feet, you don't get that. LSU fans are on the ground. As I said the other night, they're in the house, not looking from the sidewalk. They get it and they understand Things are even further eroding during this season. They don't, see, they don't see the turnaround pad. They don't see any way to correct it. And I think for the record, they're right about that. But this whole, this whole allegation that if someone did something good a couple of years ago, you cannot change your opinion on them is ignorant. It doesn't exist in any other walk of life. If you had a kid and the kid brought home all A's on the report card, what would you do? Well, you'd celebrate it. That's a, that's a momentous occasion. Your boy didn't really get to experience that very often growing up. But then what happens if he goes and steals a car? And then two days later, he knocks off a convenience store. And then four days after that, he pushes a kid off his bike. Well, what do you keep doing? You keep saying, well, look, hey, I don't love it, but you did make all A's. How much do you put up with? Because that's kind of what's happening at LSU right now. You, it's not a volunteer job. Ed Orgeron makes a lot of money. This sport doesn't sit still. It's a continuum. It just keeps going and going and going. When Nick Saban wins a title at Alabama, how long does he live off of it? About five minutes. And then he moves on. You got to move on. 2019 was great. 
But no matter how great it was, they give out a total of one trophy for that year. Now, it was a historic trophy, but they give out one trophy for it. What do you do? Get to take the next five years off? Let me ask this question. What are the critical factors for a winning program? What are the critical factors? Because I would ask any detractor out there to maybe this attitude. Anyone who thinks Ed Orgeron is no longer fit for this job. What are the critical factors? And, and you, can, you can look up and down. Like, what are the key indicators that things are turning around? And then tell me where any one of them is lit green right now. Because I don't think a single one of them is. There, there's nothing short of emotion that you could base that argument on. There is no logical pro Orgeron argument for LSU football right now. So anyone yelling at you about being negative about the guy just has hurt feelings. I mean, they don't have any logic. There's no, there's no tangible evidence to base that off of. And then here's where it gets a little more real. And here's what has LSU folks aggravated. And this is what I think people are totally missing nationally. What are the critical standards that Ed Orgeron demands his players to meet? And then once you define them, write them down on a piece of paper for me, and then tell me, is he meeting those standards? Is the leader of the program meeting the standards that he demands his players meet? The answer is no, he's not. People in the program know that. People around the program know that. That is not a Saturday problem. That's a Wednesday problem. That's not a fix your technique and we'll win the game 20 to 17 problem. That's like a, a critical factor problem that's not gonna correct itself. The second part, this is where the detachment is, is people nationally, a lot of the national media types think the LSU program is in disarray. The LSU program's not in disarray. Let me tell you what a program in disarray looks like. A program that's in disarray, you open your laptop every other morning and you see another guy got arrested. Or you open your laptop every other morning and two more guys have hopped in the transfer portal. Or you open your laptop every other morning and the few remaining respected, admired administrative types are on the first thing smoking out of town. None of that's happening at LSU. The kids aren't the ones getting in trouble. Staff members aren't fleeing left and right. Kids aren't jumping in the transfer portal. It's not a program in disarray. It's a head coach in disarray. That's it, and that's all. And that's what's gonna make the decision, whenever Scott Woodward and company decide to make it, so easy. Because it's not a top to bottom torch the barn, kill the rats, total rebuild, block off the next four years and don't give us any expectation. Whoever ends up getting this job is gonna step into a rocket ship. That whole premise is what has people so enraged down there. One of the main things that on the surface is a, a good axiom that comes out of Ed Orgeron's mouth is block out the noise, block out the noise, block out the noise, block out the noise. Dude, he's the noise. The players aren't the noise. The players have stayed in line. The players have done what they're supposed to do. The staff's done what they're supposed to do. The administration's done what they're supposed to do. They got a lot of good people down there. They got a lot of good kids down there. They're doing what they're supposed to do by and large. You have not heard more than a hiccup or two. Aside from the Dare Rosenthal deal, what else have you heard out of LSU? Yeah, you've seen losses on the field, but that's a team. The program's not in disarray. So the state of LSU football to me is not in a blender at all. What they're doing is riding out a thunderstorm. But see, if you pull up you know, the old eye, Josh, you pull up the extended forecast, it rained in Nashville two days ago. It was really ugly outside. I'll tell you what helped me. What helped me is when I pulled up the eight-day forecast and I saw those little sunshine icons. It can look really bad outside in the moment, but the storms pass. LSU is just in the middle of a storm, but this thing's going to pass. And when it passes, you've got a top-to-bottom organization that otherwise is built for immediate success. That's why they got to nail this hire. If they nail this hire, this is a program ready to explode. I know it doesn't look like it right now because it's not going to happen in 2021, that's a program ready to explode. Everything is in place. The administration is built the right way. One credit that I will give Ed Orgeron and his staff, and this is not to be overlooked, is they have held recruiting classes together. And you know what that means? When those kids aren't jumping in the portal, you know what it means? It means they love LSU. I don't think all of them love the situation there right now. They got a roster full of kids that love Louisiana. I don't think they're going anywhere. I don't think there's going to be a mass exodus. I don't think in that athletic department there's going to be a mass exodus. I think there's going to be one major move that's made, but that's a lot easier to do. When it's so clear that the one move will circumvent the need to make 15 other moves, you make the move. They're going to make the move. This has nothing to do with the coaches show thing last night. Although it was entertaining, I had really no problem with it. I probably would have handled it kind of like Ed Orgeron did, to be honest with you. That's why I couldn't be a head coach. As I've told you, Colin, I would probably make death threats. So 
That's one of about 47 reasons I'm never going to be a head coach. Uh, the other thing is I don't think it's going to change based on Saturday. i got a couple of buddies who are adamant that, well, Ed Orgeron's future is going to be decided this Saturday. I don't care if they win 31-17. I think he's going to be gone. If they lose Saturday, it'll exclamate it a lot more. I, it's not a Saturday problem at this point is what I'm telling you. That's as clear as I can make it. It's not a Saturday problem. Loved what Ed Orgeron did in 2019. The last thing in the world I want to be saying is what I'm saying right now. But no one has brought any tangible sign that things are turning for the better down there. Anytime you ask, it's only, well, it's worse today than it was yesterday. And these are not necessarily people who are motivated to paint a crappy picture. They want to paint a rosy picture. You can't. You can't just make it up out of thin air because they make you play a football game every Saturday. LSU plays Kentucky Saturday. They're an underdog of three and a half points to Kentucky. And that's where things are right now. I don't think that's where things will be for very long.